in making this gift box, we're going to save a lot of work by using the bandsaw. So what I've got is a block of wood, and uh, the grain is running this way. Um, so you're looking at the end grain here. And I didn't want to put the end grain on the top. I, this, these are my orientation marks, so once I cut it off, I know how it aligns. And then I make the top a little bit thicker. So uh, then I slice it on the bandsaw uh, to take off both of the sides, and now we're going to hollow out the inside. The bandsaw can't start in the center. We're going to come in from the side. So we take a look at which way the grain is going. It's going in this direction here. So we're going to start in here because that's going to be easier to hide the glue joint. We're going to come in from here. We're going to go cut out a square out of the center. Now because we can't make a round corner, what we're going to come in, uh, or square corner, we're going to come in and we're going to round it off. So uh, I'm going to save this here bottom and the top so we can attach it later. Now I'm going to go back in and square it up. The center that we took out, we're going to use for the bow on the top of the box. So at the spot that we brought the bandsaw in, uh, we glue that joint. Then we will put on the uh, top and the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an outline of the bottom so I can smooth that off and before I glue it I'm going to do the smoothing and then I'm going to take my chisels in here and I'm going to smooth the inside finish off the inside and also with the top what we're looking at here is the grain is going this way so this is in grain this is all in grain so smooth that off uh, it's easier rather than pushing the chisel straight forward to put the chisel on an angle. Then you're using a little slicing action of the blade and it just makes a little smoother cut. This outside perimeter is what matches up to the box. So even if I didn't cut it really square, it matches up uh, with the, like the kerf of the saw and when I glue that on you're hardly going to be able to see that seam. So I'm just going to flatten off this inside area. Okay now I align, align my reference marks. Squish it around a little bit. And I'll put the clamps on. This is the chunk we took out of the center. So we're going to make the bow out of that. So we're going to first take it on the bandsaw and slice off about that much. This is going to be the bowl. So we're going to just take and draw. That'll be the tie section in the center. This is the ribbon coming around. Okay. 
and then we just draw the ribbon on. Kind of like a figure eight with a uh, knot in the center. And then we're just going to run off the ends of the ribbon like that. So we slice it to thickness first. After we slice it to thickness, then we'll just cut out the profile. Just rounding it off a little bit. Now we're just going to drill the two holes here and then we'll start dishing it out with the bandsaw. Now we're going to uh, curve the ribbon so the outside the ribbon is raised. So I'm just going to make a dish. What I'm going to do is set it on the two supports like this and I'm going to just bandsaw it into a like a cup shape. So that begins to give us the shape of the ribbon coming up off the package. Now I'm going to thin out the bottom. So the bottom I'm just going to uh, uh, just take these corners off here. That will save a lot of carving. So I'm just imagining this being a ribbon and what a ribbon looks like. The center knot here is going to be rounded. I'm keeping the bottom flat here so I have a place to glue it to on the top of the box. Nice little whittling exercise. So you start by doing your stop cuts around the knot in the center and then uh, I am going at different levels with the uh, bow that's wrapped in there so one is going to be lower one's wrapped over the top. So the ribbon is the hardest thing to do on this uh, project. Um, when we started we started drawing a figure eight so we started that was the knot in the center we made the bows come out like that and then we drilled a hole there and then we started uh, opening it up like so and then to get the twist of the ribbon from here it goes in the inside and it goes all the way to the outside the underside is just the opposite it goes from the outside all the way to the inside so it gives it that flatness of the ribbon so this inside goes all the way to the outside same on this side this inside goes all the way to the outside there and then these two pieces here are just the ribbon coming off these here and then you do some interesting shapes with the uh, ribbon here uh, so it comes up and you have a little curl and so forth so now uh, as we're carving these we want to give it a flat look so we want to thin the edges but don't make it so real thin in the middle of the ribbon you won't be able to tell that uh, it's thicker uh, if you thin the edges nice and gradually so uh, uh, you see how we're coming down into the knot here uh, so this one is below where this one here is above the one that's above from the bottom that's raised up is the top one here and uh, the ribbon is just about finished. I'm just adding some details, doing some cleanup. So putting in the scrunches in the ribbon as it's going into the knot. I'm drawing the ribbon onto the box. So 
I just measured off where uh, the center of the box for the ribbon and uh, so the ribbon will be raised. When I draw this, I'm just, my fingers are a gauge against the side. That's close enough. What I'm doing is using colored pencil. This is a Blick Studio, a high pigmentation, fade resistant pencil. It's a stiff, uh, small brush, and I dip it in water. And just smooth out the colors. So I'm adding several different colors uh, all in the red but I want to mix it a little bit. There's a little bit of a purple. I've got some vermilion in it and uh, I just want to get a kind of a nice blend of colors. So what's the advantage of using colored pencils? Uh, well it has a lot of advantages over stain. Uh, this whole end of this box is ingrain. The grain's going straight in. Stain would take a very deep uh, uh, tone because it would soak in deep versus the flat grain here. Uh, now, uh, using the color pencils, both of them are the same color. They're both even. The uh, uh, advantage of uh, colored pencils over watercolors probably not a whole lot although watercolors go on wet where I'm putting the colored pencil on dry so I can control the amount of pigment I'm putting on you can also do that with watercolors but it's already mixed with the water so you already have the soaking in process uh, this I got a little surface check in here and with the colored pencil I can take and just rub it and get more pigment into that crack so that I close up that crack. So what I'm going to do, this has been stained down to here and I'm going to blend this right in. This is something that would be very difficult to do with stain. But I'll just blend it right in. I like the idea of being able to blend a lot of different colors in and uh, it kind of makes it repairable where you can uh, match colors go over the top of it with colors now what I'm going to do to make this more durable is I'm going to varnish over the top okay there's one color let's put on a little bit of the purple in there and uh, about like that. Let's put in some vermilion there. And then we will take and just do the there. And that will blend it in the same as what was above. So uh, the nice thing about the uh, pencils is even after I varnish this over the top, I can change the color. So I can go back and uh, draw right on top of the varnish, blend it in again and with the water, and then uh, varnish over the top of that. Now you've got to be a little careful when you're varnishing because you don't want to brush it too hard because it's going to um, uh, move your paint around but just a light brushing over the top will work fine so I'm going to take my knife and clean up the edges and that before I'm going to varnish the rest of the box if I don't like the color I can go back with the colored pencils and I can make nice uh, slight changes in color one thing about the colored pencils you can do any kind of a uh, uh, as light as you want let's say you just want a little touch of blush on a cheek that you're uh, doing of a carving then you can just put just a very light and then come in with the water and just 
and when that dries that'll be just barely a pink color so you can control it to where it's almost invisible just where your subconscious is seeing it um, now I've painted all this red and I just used about a half ounce of water and that water has got just a little pink uh, tint to it so it says that I haven't been taking much of the pigment off I've just been moving it around so the colored pencil uh, this is not a watercolor pencil it's a uh, 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 Blick Studio uh, pencil and uh, it does move with water but you have to do a little bit of scrubbing on it and uh, that is kind of what makes it better than the watercolor I think because you can control it better now there's nothing wrong with taking a regular pencil so I'm going to go and do uh, uh, shading in here taking a regular pencil and going in and do your creases and folds uh, but what I like to do is take the complementary color the complementary color of uh, red is green and I will just lightly build in shadows so this bow is casting a little bit of a shadow under the ribbon and I'm just going to go just very lightly over the top of that and I'm going to just take and brush that in a little bit and that's how I'm going to build my shadows I touch the pencil a little bit into the water first that there has a little bit of a different effect uh, it goes on a little bit nice see there are some areas that are way down in there that I can't quite get yet get to uh, it's real sharp creases so that green pencil I get it down in there wet it and it's a little softer and it goes right into that corner there and that's how I'm going to build my shadows and before it's done I'm gonna wait for it to uh, dry and then see what the colors look like and then I'll go back and probably darken up some of them and blend in the shadows a little bit more uh, so th the varnish I'm gonna use over the top of this is a polyurethane varnish and um, it just uh, does a very nice protective coat I like to use the uh, Minwax Helmsman which is an indoor outdoor varnish that helps protect the colors and that on it now there's a spot I got a little bit too dark so uh, I'm going to go back with the red again uh, and uh, bring more red back into that too much of a shadow I put in there and you can always go and carve it off too if it's a uh, if you really make a mistake there